The media is trying out a new spin on Transportation Secretary Pete Buttigieg. By all accounts, he's had a pretty rough year. We've covered it. He's facing criticism over his handling of the Ohio train derailment and chaos at the airports. But never mind all that. Wired Magazine writing this. It's being described as an over-the-top gushing profile, and it's titled, Pete Buttigieg loves God, beer, and his electric Mustang, with the subheading adding this. Infrastructure occupies just a sliver of his voluminous mind. Uh, that's not it. We will put up on the wall what we're talking about. So we've got his voluminous mind, his cathedral mind, the curious mind of Pete, and his cabinet job requires only a modest portion of his cognitive powers. Harris, I wish he would have used those cognitive powers in East Palestine with baby formula and beyond. Yeah, I mean, there were just so many opportunities. Although, you know, he did get an upgrade. He wasn't just dropped off by the Secret Service SUV and then had to take out his bike. He's now driving an electric yeah. Mustang. I, I think that's an upgrade for him. Look, we just want him to do his job. If people want to, you know, crush on Pete Buttigieg, I guess <laughs> if they have time to do that, I'm all right with that. But for the things that you mentioned, and I've talked with this team, we didn't just have that one derailment. We've had a lot of things happen. Supply chain, he's been absent for some of that. And there should be pressure and accountability push against the transportation secretary when some of those things fall, not just under your purview, but they're in your direct report. That's all I really care about. Look, if they want to say he's got great clothes and good hair, I don't really care. But you've got to write the truth. If you were a mom in this country from a year ago, you remember when you couldn't get your hands on some Infamil, some Similac, and a special category that you needed. And he wasn't taking calls. Yeah, but they didn't write the truth, Emily. Instead, they wrote a love letter. Here's part of the love letter uh, they wrote to Pete. Prepare to be intrigued by Pete Buttigieg, the enigmatic figure whose intellect rivals a Mensa black card holder. <laughs> Wire delves into his thoughts on neoliberalism, masculinity, and Christianity. So he's a Mensa card holder <laughs> as well now. Right. I think what, it's, what I took away from this article, you know, Pete Buttigieg is sort of himself no matter what. But the media covers him differently. And this author clearly had an absolute worship of his, quote, cathedral mind. And I want to point out why to the far left are certain things about Pete Buttigieg okay. It was okay that he enlisted in the Navy, for example, because he did so in the hopes of promoting democracy in Afghanistan. It's okay for him to be religious, for example, because his roots in Episcopalianism grounds his decision making and he works for a boss that whose sound Catholicism is in hopes of reviving the nation's soul. There was a whole shape in this article that painted the far right wing as of course anti masculinity and anti-democratic preoccupied um, and it went on like that and my whole point is that when they shape a character for the United States which they are clearly doing here to say look at this person mm. whose job only takes a portion of his cognitive abilities they are saying but here is why it is okay for us to have a rise of liberal religion for it's okay to say that he believes in God it's okay because of the reasons I just stated because if one of us were to say it, it wouldn't be okay. If I went to a Latin mass as a Catholic, that's not okay, right. right? There'd be an FBI undercover agent there. But it's okay for this president because he's a Democrat and he's trying to revive the soul of America. So to me, the tenor of this article was so patently offensive, offensive because it gave the green light for these principles in the way that made it palatable for that left that is usually so disdainful for all of us. It was gross, and maybe he could revive East Palestine instead of the soul of America, because he's not doing a good job at that part. Um, you know, when you were a gubernatorial candidate, Congressman, I just wonder if you got glowing profiles like this one. It wasn't just this. Beto O'Rourke got that glowing Vanity Fair magazine. We'll put it up. Uh, Beto's Choice, I want to be in it. Man, I'm just born to be in it was the title. Did you get anything like that, Congressman? Favorable coverage was just talking about what my background was, just getting facts of a biography. And it's a hey, victory. People could just know truthfully what uh, I've maybe done in life, what my, my experience is or talking about where I stand on issues. I don't care what, where you are in the media. If you're reporting on our race, all I care is just be accurate. By the way, you could even attack me. Just be accurate, be truthful on it. I'm not out there at all seeking for you to try to make me someone I'm not. Just shoot straight with people who want to make an informed decision. And that's why I like to the push for like ranked choice voting. Like people are having a hard enough time figuring out who their top choice is for these races. Uh, and I think that ultimately, you know, to Harris's point, what people want is competency. Mm. You become yeah. president of the United If we were president yeah. for a day, who would we want 
to be the Secretary of Transportation, whoever is the most qualified person to right. do the job, and that is not Pete Buttigieg on any day. No, it's not, Cheryl. <laughs> no. You know, I gotta wonder though, who's pushing this and why? Is it his PR department that realizes that he's they've got a disaster on their hands, that the last year has been very bad for him between the FAA and the train derailments and the paternity leave that was not telegraphed at all. All of a sudden it's like, where's Pete? Oh, he's on paternity <laughs> leave. Oh, okay, well gosh. You is it, a, is it a political thing? Are they really worried that Biden is so weak and Harris is so weak they need to prop up somebody else because no, that's who the they polling like. mm -hmm. and they like him? I mean, I, I'm just throwing that out there. But look, at the end of the day, it's pretty obvious that he did not do his job. But so I'm not sure that he's going to be the right leader if something happens with Biden and Harris. And again, I, I just, I, I'm just throwing Think that question out there. About how oppositional some of those things are. Mm. A voracious mind. Someone who, yeah, I mean, think about that. Who are they oppositional to in the media right now? Ooh. The president of the United States and mm -hmm. some of the rhetoric against him and his gaps and his mental gaps, so on and so forth. It's interesting. I think it is very much political. I think it's very, it's, it's on purpose. That is a fantastic point. It immediately draws a contrast to the president. And we know there were West Wing whispers about Secretary Pete. Hey everyone, I'm Emily Campagno. Catch me and my co-hosts Harris Faulkner and Kaylee McEnany on Outnumbered every weekday at 12 p.m. Eastern or set your DVR. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page for daily highlights.